it, it's hard to uh, look at which of Judge Johnson's ruling would have been the most significant. I mean, there were so many that I think were impactful. I think, you know, the, the one that stands out to me is the ruling regarding the sale of the Montgomery March. Uh, that was after the beating on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And there's a lot of scrutiny. There's a lot of pressure. I can only imagine uh, what Judge Johnson was dealing with at that time. But he had already kind of set uh, his pattern of, of, of where he stood and what his principles were. As ASTA became a part of plaintiff in the lawsuit, we then could bring cases to the court and to and, and point out to the court what was happening. And, and Judge Johnson uh, didn't play with anybody. He just simply he cut through the chase and had these schoolboys to do what was right. So, in a way, my grandfather and Judge, when they became friends and really close, genuine, loving friends, in their own way, they were making differences in the world in a positive way, but they were also outsiders here in Montgomery. They were outsiders together. And you will hear many, many stories of Judge going fishing. That was his oasis. He loved to fish. And the sad reality is he wasn't really ingrained in this community in Montgomery, a community that I love so much. Um, when he was outside of the courtroom, he would find solace and sanctuary in a fishing boat. When Ruth talks about, and they met in adolescence, uh, and then, you know, were together for so many years, um, the way she described him, um, he was always focused. You know, whether he was building outhouses or bookkeeping, he had a, a job bookkeeping, um, law school, um, in the war, uh, as a lawyer, as a prosecutor, as a judge, I, I think he was just wired that way.